Hi, and welcome back to Hanging with Hooper. Um, I am in school today. It is a Saturday, which I don't particularly like, but sometimes it has to be done. It is the end of our fall break, and we have some HVAC um, construction going on in our building, and so I have to move rooms for the next three weeks. So I'm here to just do a little bit of arranging in that um, short-term room. And then I'm also going to be sharing with you some of the things I've been doing in the past few weeks. So hopefully that will spark, spark some imagination, um, give you some ideas of things that you could be doing in your own room. So join me. So here is what I am starting with. Um, some first graders were just in here, so there's some of their artwork, which is actually going to be perfect um, because soon I will be sharing um, my back cave room transformation coming up. So that will, those little bad boys are going to stay if the teacher doesn't come back to get them. Um, this is a teacher assistant who houses her stuff in here. So we'll kind of block that off so students stay away. We have some old computer systems over here. Um, so this is what we are working with for our temporary room setup. <clears throat> All right, so here's my final setup. I'll have them remove these two desks. Um, they obviously still need to bring in chairs and raise the desks um, because these were set for first graders and not fifth graders. I have a table back here. They can do group work. They also have this counter to do some group work. This will be for my aide to do um, work with kids or if I need a small group table. Um, this is all of my kids' stuff, so that will go in their desk. My teacher area, I gotta get my books and stuff. My projector, so enough floor space for us to continue to do projects. Um, this space obviously is gonna be off limits. And there's that. Now, let's talk about some of the things that I did in the last couple of weeks. All right, so let's talk about a few things uh, that we have done in class recently that my kids have really enjoyed. So the first thing is, as I have stated before on here, I am trying to do reading a little bit differently. So based on the science of reading, if you have been doing the research um, and um, finding the right people to listen to, um, the science of reading, number one, is not a curriculum, but it is literally all of these people looking at the ways that people learn to read. One thing that they know is that teaching them reading comprehension in the ways that we have been doing, such as main idea, um, doing like all of those different types of things separately and independently is not going to help them to understand what they're reading. What we do know is, you know, in the upper elementary, most of our kids can decode and can read fluently. However, they're understanding nothing that they're reading. And a couple of years ago, I was super frustrated. Like, it didn't matter how much I worked with kids. They could not answer the questions. They're failing everything. And so that's when I started researching things. So I am a little bit ahead of the game than some of the people around me. Um, I didn't know I was researching the science of reading. However, that's essentially what I was doing when I was trying to look up ways to help these kids. And I was hating teaching. Like, I didn't know if I could do this. And number one, I will say that I am blessed to be at a school that has administrators that allow us to do what is right for kids. Um, and changing the way that I'm teaching has made me love teaching again. And I didn't think I would say that. I will say that I am trying to learn about phonics and all the spelling rules because um, back, way back, you know, 17, 20 years ago when I started teaching, this is my 21st year. So when I started teaching, like, 
spelling lists we're literally just memorizing and we know that that doesn't work either um so i am trying to teach myself all of those spelling rules and stuff and i will tell you that one of the books that i have been recommended um by jamie peebler who is very well known for um teaching and helping people understand the science of reading is um, uncovering the logic of English. And it literally goes through every spelling rule and why it's a rule um, and examples of words. And so I have just finished that. And so I'm excited to figure out a way to implement that into my classroom because spelling is needed. Kids cannot spell. Um, my kids also can't write. Um, not, uh, not content. They literally can't write their letters or print their letters. And so after talking with Jamie, she was like, teach cursive. That was the whole point why cursive was invented. Because if you get to um, third grade and you have not mastered the skill of printing, um, you weren't going to. Writing is a muscle memory um, that is very difficult to change, and therefore they had created cursive because it's a new muscle memory. So I have started teaching cursive, and a couple of my kids that I just couldn't even read their writing is already so much better. And so we're still practicing. Um, I'm not making them use it like in class yet, but we do practice pages every single day. Um, and I'm hoping that in January, when we come back from Christmas break, to start making them use it, um, at least for a, a time. Um, because if we don't ever make them use it, they won't because they want to stay with what they're comfortable with. So um, I'm sure I'm going to have some pushback from that, but we will, we'll see. A lot of them do enjoy it. Um, and so I'm excited to, to see that difference. So just being able to read their writing has helped improve the time on which I um, grade or um, assess their work. Um, now we got to work on the spelling. So that is where we are with like the English, the writing um, part of our day. Um, the next thing I'll talk about with our ELA um, reading, all of that, um, is I have changed teaching the different reading comprehension skills. Um, I talk about them like we're going to assess because I still have to have assessments. I still have to have grades. Um, that's a different soapbox. But I am sick of teaching main idea. They've had it since kindergarten and they still can't identify the main idea. Like that should be a problem for people that should have their eyebrows almost up to their hairline because why do we go that long and still not understand main idea? And it's because we don't have the vocabulary and the background knowledge in order to understand what we're reading. And so there is a study out there. I think it's called something like the baseball study or something like that, um, that I've heard a lot in my research of uh, the science of reading. But, you know, if you give somebody a passage on baseball who has never played baseball or been introduced to it in any way, more than likely they're not going to understand because they have no knowledge or any vocabulary about baseball. And I have seen it over and over as that has been brought to my attention, how much of a problem that is. So how can we expect kids to find the main idea when they don't understand what they're reading? Regardless of being able to decode and read fluently, they're still not understanding anything they're reading. And so that's what I am doing. I'm working really hard to build that vocabulary and that background knowledge. Uh, so just quickly, one way that I do that is front loading as much information as I can. I used to feel like that was giving too much away, but now understanding what I know now from all the research, like it has made life so much easier to really talk about the vocabulary um, and, and the different um, topics that we're going to talk about ahead of time. Um, it really does make a huge difference in their understanding of what we're reading. Now, I always have in the back of my head, I can't do that for the state testing. Um, but my goal is that, you know, the more that we can talk about and the more vocabulary that we can build, um, they'll be more successful with that state test. Um, unfortunately, there is, you know, some things that make that test important for our corporation. However, um, I'll just keep my thoughts to myself on that one. Um, so what I have been doing instead is a lot of picture books, um, whether it is fiction or nonfiction. Um, I've also used some of my old, old 
books. And let me show you what I mean. Some people may come for me, I don't know. However, one thing that I have found is going back to like these old spectrums. Um, do they have the best questioning? No, but do they have like the reading skills questioning? Yeah, um, and they have a lot of vocabulary. And what I love about them is they are grouped into different topics. And so like the first one in this in this book is, and I think even with their more updated ones, they are fairly the same, but it, they have like four different um, articles or texts about Australia. And my kids became fascinated with Australia. And so we stopped and we, um, you know, there's one article about cane toads. And so we stopped and we did like two or three days of researching cane toads. And then they were so excited to make informational posters about cane toads. And they learned so much more um, from these old articles that, you know, people say we shouldn't use. And I didn't have to do hardly any prep because like, I, they love the articles. They love learning about new things. And that was kind of, besides picture books, that was one of, one of my first things that I had decided to do. And I was like, this is amazing. Why not find a bunch of articles related around topics? Why not go back to thematic teaching? Um, which is what I did years and years ago. And it was so much more fun. And I enjoyed teaching. And it's really, it's a lot less prep. And once you prep it, like you have it, um, you don't have to keep doing like, and it's not boring. They, they really enjoy it and you can just adapt it. And so, um, I will leave pictures of their cane toad posters, um, informational posters here. notch no but do they have a lot of the information that we talked about oh, not just through the articles but also through the story that we read um, or different stories that we read in the spectrum reading book and so I'm really proud of them and they were so excited and so engaged just by reading multiple articles about the same thing Another thing that we have been working on in reading is snots. If you've never heard of snots, it is um, something that we have purchased uh, from uh, Teachers Pay Teachers, and it's from the Appalicious Teacher. And snots stands for small notes on the side. And the articles that come with this resource are absolutely amazing, and the kids are totally engaged. Um, and so some of the the articles are like nose hairs save the day. And so it talks about the importance of nose hairs, um, the big sneeze, why, why the kids sneeze, um, washing your hands. So, you know, all about germs and the importance of that and shoe fly, um, which is just talking about the common house fly. And so the kids were totally engaged. They also have, there's like eight articles, dung beetles. That was their favorite. So learning why, um, what dung beetles are and what they do. And so cow burps, you know, the problem with cow burps. It's an amazing resource and totally worth purchasing. And it's just talking about annotating and text. And the articles are super engaging. And I was able to talk about main idea with that and all kinds of things like, you know, the different art text um, types and not just sitting on one skill for two weeks, taking a test and moving on and then them completely forget about it. We're talking about it all the time. And so I just encourage you, if you have not, but look into the science of reading. I will tell you, it's hard to figure out how to implement like the, the spelling part, the phonics part in intermediate grades, but I'm working on that. And as I learn, you know, I'll try and share some of those things with you. Check out these projects.
about going old school. I haven't done salt dough maps forever. And I don't even know. I feel like I probably did it one time um, back in the day. But I can remember making my own salt dough map. Um, and so we took our time to really study geography. Um, you know, it's super frustrating to me that kids don't understand the difference between a continent, a country, a city, a state, like all those things. Like that just unnerves me. That's basic knowledge we should have. So we took the time to learn our 50 states and learn the geography of our country. Um, and then we did salt dome maps. Um, are they correct? No, not all of them. Some of them did really well. Um, some of them have three mountain ranges. But you know what this taught me and that I need to implement more is our kids cannot copy from one spot to another. So looking at a map and putting the mountains on your own map, they struggled with that. They have the Appalachians on the correct side. However, they're going horizontal instead of vertical. Like how, how do we come to fifth grade and not be able to look at one thing and put it down here. So, you know, trying to do more of copying um, what I have, I think is an important skill for kids. Um, there's a lot of times I'm copying or mimicking something that I see from multiple areas or multiple sources. And I just, I feel like that's a life skill that we should be able to do. So that's something that I learned um, as their teacher that I need to implement more. Hi, so it's the next day and I was making my video that I'm gonna get ready to post and I realized that I forgot something really cool that we did. So um, this year I have made sure that I include some science in, um, in our day because the kids always wanna learn science and that's the fun part of learning, let's be real. So, um, and plus I'm trying to build background knowledge and vocabulary and it's a great place to do that. So I've been using this book right here and it's just quick science lessons. So I'm not really following a curriculum, but just getting some science into these kids that they desperately need. And so one of the, the weeks is all about earthworms. Um, and so I, we have a subscription at our school for Mystery Science. So I went on there and they had an earthworm lab and the kids absolutely loved it. So I thought I'd insert some of those pictures here. I will leave you with this. I just pulled out all of my Halloween, fall, um, Thanksgiving books that I may possibly use. Um, and maybe that will give you some ideas as well. I won't use them all, but I'm excited to go through them and choose ones that I think will be exciting. My next video, I hope that you um, join me back here, but my next video is going to be my bat room transformation. So I hope you join us the next time. Have a great day.